I first met Grace in the late summer of 2018. She walked into the coffee shop next to Angel Court in the city of London and sat down opposite me, right on time. In those first few seconds, I could see she was brimming with emotion. She was a black lady in her, I would say, oh, early 30s. Her hair was swept neatly to the side over her right shoulder, and my instinctive impression was that she was razor sharp with a big heart. I asked Grace what she wanted to drink. She said, a coffee would be great. So I asked her what kind, and she replied, it really didn't matter, but maybe a latte with soya milk if they had it. We chatted briefly about how hard it was to find great coffee, and then I said, so Grace, how can I help? A couple of days earlier, Grace had sent me a message on LinkedIn asking if we could meet for a chat, and I said yes, of course, but I still had no idea what she wanted to talk about. I knew it wasn't about the coffee. She looked at me straight in the eye, and then she said, can I tell you my story? I was raised, Grace said, by a single mother. I never had any siblings. It was always just me and my mum. She never had a lot of money, and I guess you could say we scraped by. My mum had cleaning jobs mainly and menial, low-paid tasks. They were the kind of jobs other people looked down on. But my mother worked hard, and she was diligent. When she did any job, she gave it 200%. She was proud of her work, and she was so proud of me. And what little she had, she spent on me. And so whilst I didn't have a lot of material possessions, I always knew I was loved. My dad took off and left us when I was still too young to remember him. And although my mum was living here legally in the early years, somewhere along the way, after my dad left, she didn't renew her papers because my dad had always taken care of that stuff. And she wasn't legal anymore. So we spent my childhood looking over our shoulders and just making sure we never stepped out of line. And growing up in South London, I used to look out across the river at those tall, shiny buildings in the city of London and dream about leaving this life behind, about how maybe one day I could get a job there. And I had no idea how that would ever happen because I went to a pretty rough school where no one ever went to university. But I worked hard, and there was a math teacher who took an interest in me, and she told me I could go far. I just had to get my grades. So I did. I worked so hard. Grace said my mum wasn't so great at English or maths, so she couldn't help, and I had to figure out my schoolwork for myself. And of course, that was all before Google or YouTube, so I couldn't just look it up. But I made it to university. I got a really good degree, and I qualified as an actuary. And eventually, I did get that job at a top asset management firm in one of those tall buildings. And when they told me I was hired, I couldn't believe it. I thought, now I can look after my mum, and now she doesn't have to worry anymore. Maybe she could even give up those cleaning jobs. At this point, Grace's eyes welled with tears as she said, but now that I'm here, I don't know how to be. That's what she said. Now that I'm here, I don't know how to be. And she stared down at her half-finished cup of coffee. And I said, Grace, what do you mean you don't know how to be? And she said, well, here's an example. You know, earlier today, in our Monday morning meeting, it was just me, I'm a young black woman, and there were seven guys in the room, and they're all white middle-aged men. And I was in the meeting representing our department. Anyway, someone asked a question about one of our processes, and it was pretty detailed and pretty technical, and I knew the answer. But before I had a chance to speak, one of the other guys jumped in, and he started to answer it, and he always does that. And it was the wrong answer, and I knew it was the wrong answer, but I just never got my chance to speak. And then suddenly the meeting was over, and that was it. And it happens every week in those meetings, and I just don't know how to be. And Grace looked up at me, and a tear rolled down her face. I mean, I felt her anguish after the mountain she had climbed to get here, and now she was defeated by a simple Monday morning meeting. I got her another coffee, and then I asked her the obvious question, but Grace, why didn't you speak up? You knew the answer. And this is what she said. I think it's because I never had a father. I think it's because I never had a father. I did not expect her to say that, and she could see I was looking at her, not understanding and not comprehending. So she went on, I never had a father or a brother, and growing up, it was just mum and me, and I never spent any time with men. In fact, I didn't know any until I was in my 20s. And I definitely never knew any white men. And when I'm in a room full of them at work, if they don't let me join the conversation, I find it hard to speak up and get in. I've never learned how to be in this situation. And there are two voices screaming in my ears. In my left ear, there's a voice saying, it's because you're a woman, and they're not interested in what you have to say. And then in my right ear, there's another voice, and, it's, and, and that voice says, it's because you're black. And they don't believe you could possibly know the answer when they don't. And that's what's going on in my head. And so I just freeze. And that's what I mean when I say I don't know how to be. That's terrible. After that mountain, she climbed to get that job. Grace worked so hard to be in that job. And she's fabulous at it. All she wants is to make life better for her mum and for herself. And one day to have a family of her own. To have children who won't need to look over their shoulder 
every day on the way home from school. That's all she wants. She looked out at those tall buildings and wanted a job there and worked so hard and got it. And now, after every Monday morning meeting, every week, because she's a woman, because she's black, this is her story. Now that I'm here, I don't know how to be. We have to fix this. It's pretty simple. People like Grace feel the way they do because of the way others treat them. There's a reason she feels that way. If her colleagues asked for her opinion and listened while she spoke and gave her some space and didn't talk over her, in other words, showed her a modicum of respect, she wouldn't feel like she doesn't know how to be. I have a lot of people writing to me right now and asking what they can do about racial inequality. And it starts right here by treating everyone around us the way we'd want to be treated if we were in their shoes. Grace deserves to be in that room on her own merits, whether they let her speak or not, whether they include her or not, whether they show her any respect or not. She is as smart as any of the rest of them. She could do any of their jobs. I hear CEOs constantly tell me they would definitely promote black people if there were any to promote. Where are they all, is what they always ask. And Grace is sitting there, right under their noses, and they don't see her. It simply doesn't occur to them when they stare at their wall-to-wall -wall monochrome metropolitan elite boards and executive committees that the one person they should be nurturing is Grace. She has come so far against all the odds. Think of the cognitive diversity, the grit and resilience, the outright intelligence, and just the plain common sense she would bring to a board or to senior management. Precisely because she is a smart black woman. Just imagine if management looked at Grace and said, let's take her as far as she can go, all the way to the very top. I mean, just think. And it all starts by getting it right in that Monday morning meeting. I want this to be a world where Grace makes her way across town, sits down opposite me, sips her coffee and says, this is my story. Now that I'm here, I know exactly how to be myself.